All right, hey everyone, how's it going? It's your brother Noah Hines, and in this video today, I'm going to be addressing the topic of can the Kundalini spirit operate with inside of a church or with inside of a Christian church? And I would say the mainstream narrative, especially amongst charismatics, is that no, it cannot for whatever reason. But today in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a compelling passage that I believe indicates that a Kundalini spirit can operate with inside of uh, a Christian church. A couple things that I want to say though, first before we jump into that is, one reason why I believe that a lot of people are saying, no, Kundalini spirit, that can only operate in Hinduism or Eastern religions, is because a lot of people want to safeguard word of faith affiliations that they have. I've talked about this before, well, a lot of charismatics that people love, a lot of charismatic leaders that you could think of in your mind, actually endorse and support people that are in the Word of Faith movement. And the people in the Word of Faith movement, many of them operate with the Kundalini spirit. And because of that affiliation, a lot of people have come up with this doctrine that a Kundalini spirit cannot operate inside of the church. Now, another thing that I want to say is if you don't like the name, the Kundalini spirit, because you want to be hyper literal, show me where it is in the Bible, which I will show you actually a concept where this is in the Bible. In Acts chapter 16, verse 16, it says, now it happened of us going to the place of prayer, a certain girl having a spirit of divination or some translation say a spirit of Python met us who was bringing her masters much gain by fortune telling so if you really don't like the the name the kundalini spirit and you say that's an erroneous concept well the concept is right here and if you really want just call it a python spirit instead because in many contexts that's interchangeable but you have to at the very least admit that there is a spirit of divination that exists according to the bible and it, like I said, in some translations, it's called a spirit of Python. So why not just call it a spirit of Kundalini when you really boil it down like that? Because that's what it's called. That's what it's called in these Eastern religions is a Kundalini awakening. And I believe that same spirit operates in people that are operating under a false anointing. Now, another thing that I want to say as well, too, is... I'm just here to establish the concept that this is a reality. Don't therefore take this video and start throwing around accusations willy-nilly that because you discern some things potentially may be off, well, that's indefinitely the Kundalini spirit, that's indefinitely a false spirit. You need to be careful with that accusation for multiple obvious biblical reasons. If you've watched plenty of my content, you know that I don't go around just saying this is Kundalini, that's Kundalini. I believe that is a dangerous thing to do and I don't believe that it's biblical. And I want to say that I'm not here in this video to give you a list of 10 manifestations of the Kundalini spirit. I believe many times and I tell many times people this, this needs to be examined on a case by case basis because a false anointing can look very close to a real anointing and there's a lot of nuance in discerning something like that and you just need to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis many times to see if there is a kundalini spirit in operation so i'm not going to just give this broad brush uh teaching in this video to say and which you could hypothetically do here's the signs of a kundalini spirit but i just simply want to establish the reality of that this spirit that has a false anointing that operates with false miracles, false signs, can operate within the context of so-called Christendom or so-called Christianity or even real genuine churches in actuality. But a lot of this comes back to, or would have to come back to, the idea that somebody is Christian just because they claim to be Christian. Like, why is it that... Here, let me ask this question. Okay, deception could operate in a real Christian church, in a Christian church, right? Uh, sin could operate, temptation for sin. All various forms of Satan's devices, we could all agree, could be tempted 
by the tempter inside of a Christian church. But for some odd reason, a kundalini spirit can't operate. This is what many people say, at least, right? But I'm saying this is erroneous logic. This is not... Uh, this is not logical to say so when you would admit that sin, deception, and even here in Galatians chapter 3, it says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath evidently been set forth crucified among you? And I've even heard some of the people that would say a kundalini spirit can operate in a church talk about this passage. So witchcraft can operate but a kundalini spirit can operate. But a kundalini spirit is pretty much the same thing as a spirit of witchcraft, right? So you see how this logic really doesn't have anything to stand on, that a kundalini spirit can't operate with inside of a Christian church? How are you going to make that claim when the Bible is teaching right here, within a Christian church, the Church of Galatia, there was a spirit of witchcraft deceiving people. It's pretty illogical to say, therefore, a kundalini spirit couldn't also operate when it's, when it's saying pretty much the same thing, kundalini or witchcraft spirit, right? And witchcraft and the New Age are essentially the same thing when you boil it down to it. The New Age is just a more reserved, seemingly righteous, seemingly helpful version of witchcraft. Even many people that are Satanists have said things, or numerous people that are Satanists have said things like, why are the New Agers deceiving themselves and calling it New Age when it's really just witchcraft, okay? I think we can all pretty much agree on that reality, right? I'm just showing the illogical reasoning behind this whole concept that a kundalini spirit can't operate with inside of a Christian church. And the Bible just does not make this distinction that, you know, uh, a kundalini spirit, a false spirit cannot operate with inside of a church. It, it's just, it's just not in the, there's just not a biblical reference to go to. But one Bible reference that I do want to go to that I believe is an indicator that uh, a kundalini spirit could operate is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 through 4. So I'm really going to break this down and I believe towards the end of breaking this down, it's going to click in your mind if it doesn't right away. So just stick with me. Verse 3 says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his ability, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So Paul is warning the church of Corinth that just how Eve was deceived, so they could be deceived as well too. So keep that in mind. The warning that is for the church of Corinth here is a similar warning, is a warning for a similar consequence of how Eve was deceived. It goes on to say, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might bear well with him. So this passage is saying right here that there could be another spirit a counterfeit spirit that Christians could receive, could bear with in their churches if they give in to deception. Now, that in that of itself is a good proof text, but let's take it a step further because how was Eve deceived? I believe with the New Age Gnostic lie, with New Ageism, and ultimately we know the spirit behind the New Age is Kundalini, or at least one of the major ones, right? This is obvious if you look into what the New Age teaches. And we see here in Genesis chapter 3, the deception wherewith Eve was deceived. It says in verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman that had saw the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit, therefore, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband, and he did eat. So the deception wherewith Eve was deceived was by New Age. Here's all of the core tenets of the New Age, right? Your eyes shall be open, ye shall be as gods. Knowing both good and evil, it'll make you wise. So I believe we can conclude that Eve was deceived by a kundalini-type-like spirit 
that was operating in this situation, or the devil was operating in a kundalini type way, in a new age type like way, right? However you want to slice it, this is essentially what's going on in this situation. Now let's take it back to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and see that Paul was warning, Paul was warning that the church of Corinth could be deceived in a similar way as Eve. So what am I trying to say, guys? I'm trying to say that this is a warning about a new age spirit. This is a warning about a kundalini spirit. And it's saying right here in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 4, that there could be another spirit that they could receive. So they could receive a demonic spirit that is similar um, with regards to how Eve was deceived. So I believe this is a great biblical reference to show that somebody could be uh, imparted a demonic spirit that is a kundalini spirit. Once again, if you don't like the name of kundalini, use the name of a python spirit or a divination spirit or you know, a new age spirit, right? Uh, however you want to, however you want to word it, the concept is there, right? And this is in the context of amongst the, the church of Corinth already, because if we go down later in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, it talks about the people who are deceiving them. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So the people that were potentially going to deceive the church of Corinth here were not just random outsiders. They were false apostles. Does this not sound like the word of faith movement with their false apostles operating under a false anointing. There's nothing new under the sun, guys. If this was the, ch uh, the case here in the church of Corinth and it could happen back then, then it can definitely happen today as well too. So I hope you guys are making all of those connections and you can therefore safely conclude that a kundalini spirit could operate amongst the Christian church. And I've cast out demons of the spirit of kundalini uh, that were inside of people who went to churches where there was a false anointing operating. I'm not saying this happens on like a reoccurring basis all the time, but I've definitely firsthand prayed for people that they themselves had testified they got a spirit of kundalini from somebody operating under a false anointing. So we shouldn't go around with paranoia. We shouldn't go around with irrational skepticism. And no, I'm not for any of that. But I am here to say that it is a real possibility that the spirit of Kundalini could operate or a false, a false spirit could operate in the context of a Christian church or a Christian ministry. Okay, guys. So may God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I will see you next time. Amen.